By the time you watch this video, either a paycheck is coming up or a paycheck just went by. If a paycheck has come in and you got nothing to show for it, money came out of the house by the day, but the enemy stole it from me. And you don't even realize it. So would you buy a house knowing that the foundation of which it's built upon is cracked, that eventually over time that house will eventually sink or worse become destroyed and you'd lose your investment of that house? Well, in this episode of the seven figure scripture series, we'll be discussing how to build your financial home upon three biblical truths according to God's will, according to God's way, according to scripture, starting in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from the Money Smart office here. And uh, I have to say, this is probably one of the last few episodes that we'll be doing in this office because yes, the rumors are correct. We will be moving soon. Location to be determined. We'll let you know in a future episode. But yes, this background, this backdrop, a couple more episodes, and we are done in this location. But anyway, for those of you watching this episode, if you haven't done so already, if you haven't followed us on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode because every Sunday, we release an episode of how we should handle our finances. If you want to become a first generation cash flow millionaire, according to the Bible, to make sure that your money and your wealth is built on the truth and the foundation to last multiple generations. So if you're not already, please click subscribe. All right, so let's get into it. I'm going to go over some of the truths that I read out of this book, which I referenced through the Bible too as well, of a book I read earlier on when I came to the Lord. And uh, in my church, they were selling these books and I picked it up and it really gravitated to the fact that, wow, the, the Bible has so much uh, uh, information and scriptures about money and success and prosperity and happiness in the Bible. And the gentleman that wrote this book, his name is Robert W. Katz. He's a CPA, a certified public accountant, along with his wife, um, Jamie Katz. And uh, go figure, uh, the gentleman that wrote this book, not only is a certified public accountant, but he has a background of also being Jewish. He converted to becoming Christian, but uh, he wrote this book called Money Came by the House the other day, and there was a forward here by Oral Roberts. So pretty intriguing book. I read this in uh, early 2000s, and I wanted to bring this up here in this series because I think this has got a very important, he's got very important points here in the guides to Christian financial planning and stories of stewardship. So if you haven't done so already, if you want to pick this up on Amazon, I'm pretty sure you can still pick it up there. We'll put the link here in the description at the bottom. Okay, so let's get into these truths. How should you build your financial home if you want to please the Lord, if you want to build it according to scripture, if you want to build it according to God's will and God's way. Well, truth number one, there's three truths. Truth number one, the money battle is spiritual. Interesting. Listen, one of the greatest interviews I've ever had in my entire life. It's probably ranked number one. It was with Rabbi Lappin a few weeks ago. And if you want to check out this interview here, the Rabbi Lappin, check out this episode right here. But in that conversation, he mentioned to me that money is spiritual. I said, is it, I said, tell to me more about that. Is it religious? He goes, no, it's not religious. It's spiritual. And it's interesting how Robert Katz also brings it up in his book here that the battle for your money is spiritual. Before I continue, let's check out this clip here for what Rabbi Lappin said about money being spiritual that blew my mind away. Let's check this out. And that comes from people's misunderstanding of money. People assume money is material and not spiritual. So <laughs> they assume that if they take your money, you have less of it. Um, spiritual has nothing to do with me being a rabbi. Spiritual has nothing to do with God. Spiritual has nothing to do with religion. Spiritual has nothing to do with piety or virtue or sin. Uh, spiritual just means something I cannot measure in a laboratory. Hmm. And so I, I can measure uh, the skin color of a person. I can measure the height of a person. I can measure the weight of the person. And the truth is that every one of those things are irrelevant. If I'm hiring somebody, <laughs> I really don't care about any of those things. The things I care about are integrity, optimism, willpower, yep. resilience. Yep. Those things are not measurable. Amazing, right? I never thought about money ever being spiritual, but there's so many references to it. Let's talk about you having to watch out for a thief. 
So if something was good, there's also got to be somebody that wants to take it away. So here in John chapter 10, verse 10, it reads like this. The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. And what better way for the enemy to destroy you than through your finances? I can't tell you how many times uh, in the last 22 years of helping people with their finances and coaching people with, with money and starting businesses and getting involved in life insurance, establishing life insurance and getting out of debt. All these different things happen between husband and wife. And I see the spiritual battle happening. I see it happen right before. I, I, I didn't contextualize it that it was a spiritual battle. I just knew that it was just a fight. <laughs> but then I started reading scripture and I started realizing, oh my gosh, there it is. That's the answer. And if one doesn't understand that there is somebody, some entity, the enemy, coming after your finances because the thief is here to steal, kill, and devour, then you, they say, well, I'm not protecting myself against anything. So in other words, by having a bad defense, but not putting on your armor, you're letting yourself get attacked in this area of finances. But here's good news. You got help. Where from? Let's take a look at Psalms chapter 23, verse 5. I love this one because we use this all the time when I was in the military. It reads like this. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. And uh, I remember my sister giving me this book by Lieutenant Carrie Cash, which is a dramatic account of how U.S. Marine Battalion experienced God's presence amid the chaos in the war of Iraq. It's actually called a table in the presence of my enemies, a table in the presence, a table in the presence. The good news is God is preparing you a table in the presence of your enemies. And in the midst of chaos, and even in the midst of war, even in the midst of a financial battle, God's saying, in the midst of that, sit down. I got a table for you if you trust me. Let's take a look at another area here of one requirement, however. It reads in Psalms chapter 37, verse 4. It reads like this. Delight yourself in the Lord, and will give you the desires of your heart. Notice it didn't say, delight yourself in your own selfishness. He didn't say, delight yourself in your own selfish desires. It says, delight yourself in the Lord. King David is saying, delight yourself in the Lord and watch what happens. That is God's requiring for you. If you want to build your financial house on solid ground, one truth is that there's an enemy after you, that God is placing a table for you in the presence of the enemies. And there's one requirement is you should delight yourself in the Lord. And why? Back to the spiritual battle that you're in. The spiritual battle that you're in is Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. A lot of my Christian uh, brothers and sisters know this scripture very well. It's about the spiritual battle. It reads like this. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Folks, especially in the area of money, you have to understand the biggest battle is there. Oftentimes, listen, the biggest battle between husband and wife is finances. The biggest battle between right now is going on in our country with our government is finances. Defund this, fund this, put your money here, raise taxes here, put your money over here. We need income over here, stimulus checks here, tax refund here. The biggest battle that we all face is because of money, because of finances. And if you don't recognize and see that that's a war going on there, that's a battle going on there, that's one that you cannot win by yourself, that you need some spiritual guidance and awareness and to guard yourself and put on the full armor of God. And it's another scripture. To put on the full armor of God, the boots of peace, the belt of righteousness, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. These are the things that help you establish a truth to fight this spiritual battle when it comes to your finances. Once you use these weapons and understand that you can guard yourself and play offense with it, watch what happens to the improvement in the establishment of your financial home. Number two, the second truth. The second truth is that there's victory in what? Surrender? Yes, victory in surrender. Not victory by defeat? No, it's victory by surrender. It's, you know, listen, my whole entire life, my whole entire walk with Christ, my whole entire time arguing and wrestling with God has always been about submission, about surrendering to Him. Let's check this out here. It's all His. When you talk about money, and stewardship and finances and possessions, it's all his. Let's take a look at this in Psalms chapter 50, verse 7. It reads like this I am God, your God. I have no need of a bull from your stall or goats from your pens, for every animal of a forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird in the mountains and the creatures of the field are mine. 
If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all that is in it. See, it's all his. Isn't it amazing? So if you know it's his, why are you trying to fight him for what's already his? It's already his. And the second part of it, you have to understand, if it's all his, then what do you have? You get nothing. <laughs> we have nothing. How do we understand that? Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7, and it reads like this. For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. So what's the point? What's the point? Listen, what's the point of a career? What's the point of a job? What's the point of a business? What's the point of money? Here's the point. God is using finances, money, in order to build our character. That's correct. Character. Check out some of these godly qualities of how he wants you to handle finances. Let's take a look at this. Godly qualities such as perseverance, discipline, charity, compassion, sacrifice, integrity, and honesty. Money is in an ideal training ground because here's what God knows. Where your heart is, guess what? That's also where your treasure is. Let's read about it here. Matthew chapter 6, verse 12. It's, it reads just like that. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So as for Christians, the goal of stewardship is much more simply than paying your bills. Just making payroll. It's more than just investing in stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and buying life insurance. The goal is what God's trying to prepare you for. <laughs> God's trying to prepare you for eternity. God wants to plan for you for the rest of your soul and your spirit for eternity. You just might think, man, I'm 80 years old, 100 years old, and I'm going to die. Well, then what's after that? I mean, if really, if you're a believer, then what's life like after that in heaven? He's preparing you for that time in heaven, for that message right now that you need to hear so that you can prepare yourself for your walk, your purpose, your eternal purpose in heaven. You want to find a little bit more details? Let's check this out in Luke chapter 16. It's a story. Let's read about it. It reads like this. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So, if you have not been trustworthy with handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? If you have not been trustworthy with somebody else's property, who will give you property of your own? You see, there's more about money than just your earthly stakes, than your earthly responsibility. There's a spiritual responsibility and a spiritual impact that you're about to make that right now that you may not think that you're about to experience. But if you're a believer, you believe that you're going to be in heaven one day, you got to understand you have a purpose then in the next phase of your existence. Number three, truth number three, must seek wisdom. If you want to build a financial house that lasts, that is an impact for multiple, multiple generations, you must seek wisdom. How do we know this? In Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, it reads like this. My people are destroyed from lack of knowledge. You see, here's the truth reality. When you were born, you didn't know anything. Somebody had to teach you how to speak. Somebody had to teach you a language. Somebody had to teach you manners. Somebody had to teach you etiquette. But when you were born, you had nothing. You learned nothing. Well, the same thing happens too with money, with finances, with wisdom. That's why you got to go out and seek it. So here's a sad truth and reality about where money is today. Because it's exacerbated by Instagram, uh, by YouTube, uh, by social media in general. People think that to have more control and power in their life is getting more things. Experiencing this lifestyle. Buying this, buying that, living here, living there. No, 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 no. God says, no. You're going to be wealthy by seeking wisdom and knowing what to do to get, not only get it, but to do with it when you receive it. You know, oftentimes people tell me, oh, Matt, you're just a self-made guy. You're a self-made millionaire. No, 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 man. I beg to deeply differ with that. This is not only my team-made guy, because I don't get anywhere in my life without a team, but more importantly, I'm a God-made man. See, none of this stuff is mine. Back to number two, right? Back to truth number two. None of this stuff is mine. I've just been entrusted with this. I've just been trusted with this by grace. I've received something that I don't deserve. And over that, not only is that something I recognize as a gift, but also I have to recognize there's also stewardship responsibility behind that too as well. Because when much is given, also if you don't take care of it, much can be taken away. So who really is in control then? Who is really in control? Let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 and 18. It reads like this. Command those who are rich in the present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, 
but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. See, oftentimes, the devil, the enemy, loves to tempt us with this overnight gain in our stock portfolio, with this, this uh, crypto craze, and wow, I've made 100, 200, 300%. This big gain in your real estate portfolio, this huge commission check, this huge dividend check. Like to say, hey man, you won the lottery. You have to understand, it's not yours to begin with. You're being tested at this very moment. You got wealth, you made money, you made profit. Mm, there's the test. The test is God saying, hey guys, listen. He's talking to his buddies up there in heaven. Hey guys, check this out. Let me see how good and faithful my servant is. Let me give him a test what he does with his money. Watch, watch, watch what he does. Watch what he does. Oh my gosh, he's tithing. Oh my gosh, he's serving. Oh my gosh, he's giving. Jeez. See, I can trust him with more. You don't think God is having a conversation in heaven with his buddies <laughs> about you that way? That's the way I think about it every time I get a check, every time I have profits, every time I have success. The success isn't mine. I just happen to be a good steward of the opportunities presented to me about the money that was sent my way to properly invest it and shepherd over it and steward over it and making sure that if I've been trusted with the least and to do the most of it, then down the road, I can be trusted with the most. So who then helps us gain money, gain wealth, get rich, gain opportunities, gain financial advancement? Who? See, the fun thing is half the parables, which is the stories that Jesus spoke of in the Bible, over half of them had to deal with money, possessions, what to do with these earthly things. You'd think that it was about prayer, but it wasn't. The only subject he talked more about outside of money and possessions is a subject of love and forgiveness. So when Jesus would talk in his parables, he talked about animals, water, to wine, mediums of exchange, which were back then in biblical times, those were subjects and areas of exchange because they were money. Today, money to us is cash and you know, transfers, whether you PayPal somebody, to us, that's money. But back then, it was animals. It was goods and services. It wasn't this tangible thing called cash as we experience today. But his message was still present then, and it is present today. What should you do? Who's really your helper? Check this scripture out in Proverbs. It reads like this. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. And check this out. Also, here's another part of God's message. In Deuteronomy 8, 18, he says, listen, remember the Lord your God, for it is him that gives you the power, the power to create wealth. So in other words, God wants to be your partner. He wants to help you. He wants to bless you. You don't think, uh, you, think you as a parent right now, if you have kids, don't you think you want to bless your children? Well, how much more is that relationship with your father in heaven as you have with your kids? God's looking down upon you from heaven and says, listen, I want my son, my daughter to do well. I want them to advance. Why? Because they have an opportunity to say, you know what? He's he or she is elevating God's message to say, hey, this is what God wants to do in your life. Here's what God wants to do through you, to you and through you. Let's check this out here in Proverbs 2 as well. It reads like this. My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. You see, God doesn't want you to make a lot of mistakes. He wants you to avoid the riffraff. He wants to have you live a long and fruitful life that is abundant and you're happy and you're prosperous. Let's check this other scripture back to Proverbs. Again, who was written by the richest king who ever lived, King Solomon. Here in Proverbs 3 verses 13 through 17, it reads like this. Blessed is the man who finds wisdom. The man who gains understanding for she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns than gold. She is more precious than rubies. Nothing you desire can compare with her. Long life is in her right hand. In her left hand are riches and honor. Make a long story short, guys. There's been very, very many scriptures in the Bible that I've seen that addresses a lot of problems that we face even today when it comes to money, when it comes to success, when it comes to prosperity building wealth. So many times I've seen in the people that we're helping, thousands and thousands of clients we've been helping from coast to coast. I see the problems. I see it. I'm like, I can see it from stage. I can see it individually within a person, 
based on the question they asked and their demeanor. I can see it in husband and wife. I can see it in couples and business partners. Like you can feel the tension. Why? Because the enemy is alive and well to steal, kill, and devour and to keep you from succeeding. and wants to keep you down. Think about this real quick. I have had a weird experience in my life being an entrepreneur. I've seen so many people, sadly, I've seen so many people, sadly, not believe in God, not have a strong faith, but they still use God's principles. They still understand that there's a bad out there. They need to seek wisdom. They understand that, man, I've been entrusted with this position, with this promotion. If I didn't do the most of it, it's going to be taken away from me. They understand that they need to improve. They need to be better stewards of their career, their investments, etc., etc. whatever has been sent their way. But sadly, they may not have a faith, which is spiritual or religious, but they're using God's principles without them even knowing it, and they're advancing. And when I see that happening, I'm thinking about, wow, all the friends and family I have at church, praying and crying and screaming for God's help on Sunday, but their faith walk on Monday through Saturday is not congruent with what they screamed and prayed for on Sunday because they are distant from these truths. So the big thing is, when I read this book, money came by the house the other day. By the time you watch this video, either a paycheck is coming up or a paycheck just went by. If a paycheck has come in, you got nothing to show for it. Money came by the house by the other day, but the enemy stole it from me. And you don't even realize it. That all these different things, by the way, there's so many things, so many different ways for money to leave your bank account, isn't there? There's Venmo, there's PayPal, there's Zelle, there's Cash App, Amazon, one pay button, eBay, boom. So many easy ways for things to get at your mind, for you to buy things and, and define yourself with possessions. But that's not what God wants. I'm telling you, that's not what God wants. God says, listen, money, scripture, title, business, status, it's all a test. And I can't tell you what the full answers or the result is going to be. All I know, there's an evidence of directions that God wants you to point towards. That's between you and God. It's in your prayer time and ask God for him to reveal that to you. But in the meantime, please, let's do a greater job in handling our finances, our money, our opportunities, our careers, our businesses. So therefore we can glorify God in all that we do. If you believe that, put in the comment section below. I will glorify God through my finances. I will glorify God through my finances. Put that in the comment section below. So before I let you go, please check out this video again of my interview with Rabbi Lappin on biblical truths. Check this out. It's been one of the greatest interviews I've had, one of the greatest conversations I had about money and finance based on biblical truths. And also here, 11 biblical money traps that you must avoid that will derail you for becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. That being said, guys, I love the notes. What are your thoughts? What's your feedback? What's your questions? What do you not understand? What don't you agree with? I want to hear from you. Again, put it in the comments section below. Let me know your feedback. With that being said, guys, I appreciate you watching another episode here of the Seven Figures Scripture Series. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Mighty Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. With that being said, I'm your Mighty Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys. Thank <laughs> you.